grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Whom are you seeking? It's the final question in our series, Questions God Asks. It's a series that's taken us from the garden of all places on Ash Wednesday. When God asks the question, Adam, where are you? And it finds its finish here in another garden as Jesus asks you today, whom are you seeking? And the answer is obvious, right? The answer is Jesus. Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Alleluia. And that obvious answer is the answer that a man named James Martin would give you if he were here today to talk with us in person. James Martin is an artist and painter from the United Kingdom. And in 2003, he painted this, Resurrection Morning. This artist, who became a follower of Jesus as a teenager, put, put his brush to the canvas in 2003 to answer the question, whom are you seeking? This is his answer. And it's an invitation to you to come and find your answer here at the tomb this morning, but from a different perspective. Do you notice this? He takes you to the back of the tomb to look out on this scene and to take it all in. And when you go there, something changes about Easter. And I think something changes about our seeking. There are two things. One is crystal clear and it's in focus. The other is blurry and it's a little hard to focus in on. The one that's crystal clear is right there at the bottom of the painting, a cold, lifeless slab where the body of Jesus had laid. And on that slab, there are grave clothes there. There's actually blood there on those grave clothes, the signs of death. And there's a headcloth that's folded up. It's Jesus' little joke, I think, to the disciples when they come to the tomb. No robber would ever fold up the headcloth, but Jesus did as he left it there. And yet, it's stark and it's crystal clear and it's right there in front of us, these signs of darkness, death, and an old reality that remain right there at the forefront, crystal clear in the tomb. And we know that place all too well. And yet, there's another view. It's at the entrance of the tomb. It's at the top of the painting. It's a little bit beyond our ability to focus. It's one that is blurry, and it might feel a little bit hard to grasp. It's what's outside the tomb, and that place is a place of light. There's white and gold and blue hues there, almost as if the glory cloud of God has come right there at the entrance. And there's growth in the garden, not death, but life. There's green on the side. It's it's an image of a new creation reality that has dawned in the resurrection of Jesus. And that's a place that we long for. We come seeking that place today. We hope for that place, even if it's a little bit blurry and it feels hard to grasp onto for you on this Easter. So what's, what's inside the tomb is dark and confining and it's old. What's outside is light and it's free and new. And, and of all things, James Martin takes our eyes right there to the middle of that painting, to the boundary between these realities where two figures stand on the edge of something significant as Mary meets Jesus there. And it's hard to tell, isn't it? Are they in the tomb? Are they just outside the tomb? And I think, I think that's the point. James Martin has titled this painting, Resurrection morning, and for him, this is Mary pouring out all of her emotion. Why? Because Jesus has just named her as he came to seek her in her seeking. He meets her there at the garden tomb at the boundary between these two realities, and the artist invites you to come and to sit at the canvas and to wonder about this scene. As Jesus comes to this seeker named Mary, in a space that he makes holy between death and life, between darkness and light, between an old reality and a new creation. And I think that's, for John, what Easter's all about. Jesus stands between these two realities, and he makes it a holy place for you. 
So as you take in this resurrection morning, painted here on the canvas, consider how John begins his story. Not this resurrection account from his gospel, but the beginning of his gospel. In John chapter 1, he says, In the beginning was the Word. And John likes to take us in his gospel back to creation, back to the moment of separation between darkness and light in the beginning. You see, for John, the color of darkness is black, and it's a color of chaos and void. And that's significant, I think, as we come seeking Jesus today, because it's all too often the color we see in our reality, right there in front of us. On the walls of the tomb, can you see it so clearly there in the painting this morning? Sometimes, sometimes it's just dark around you. And it's hard to make out anything except the crystal clear darkness of chaos and void. And that's how John wants us to begin this Easter journey. On the first day of the week, when it's still dark, he says, Mary comes to the tomb looking for any ray of hope. And all she finds is more darkness as she encounters an open tomb with no body inside. But I think she encounters something else that morning. There's an inner chaos that opens up and a void that deepens for her, neither of which are safe. I think sometimes it's easier to stay hidden, shrouded in the darkness, when what you're seeking doesn't feel exactly safe. And that tomb was open, and when a tomb is open, I don't think it's meaning to be a safe place. There was so much wrapped up for her in this tomb. She'd been there at the cross where Jesus was abandoned by everyone, where even his father turned his back on him and he died. She knew that reality. She knew that his lifeless body was removed from the cross, that it had been prepared and wrapped and laid in a new tomb in the garden in darkness, and now that body was gone and it was just dark for Mary. That was it. And as you join Mary on this Easter morning, as the scene opens up in John's Gospel, James Martin puts you at the canvas and I think wants you to consider the darkness of these walls and what brushstrokes you would place there if you were painting this clear darkness in your world. What black brushstrokes fill the tomb for you? Is it a, a suffocating reality? that you've come seeking to escape a schedule that has you feeling like you're on the ropes. An unsafe relationship with your spouse, with your parents, with your friends. A financial tomb that has you feeling so burdened and boxed in and buried that you can't see your way out of that dark place. What have you come seeking today? What void has engulfed you? Do you feel inadequate, unloved, alone? isolated, we know those dark brushstrokes all too well. Let there be light. That's how Scripture opens in the book of Genesis. Let there be light, and light came into the darkness. Those ancient words brought creation's light out of darkness, and the one, the one who spoke long ago at creation's dawn The Word made flesh speaks again today as He calls Mary's name and your name and light floods the entrance of that tomb and it drives the darkness out. In that moment, chaos is pushed back. The void is filled and here at Easter, everything changed for Mary's darkness and it changes for you as well. See, that's what happens when Jesus comes and stands at the boundary between darkness and And light, he makes it a holy place for you, a place filled with the light of his presence. He promises there is a day coming when there will be no more darkness at all, where all the chaos will be brought to order order, and every void will be filled completely for you. But just as significant, John wants you to know today that Jesus promises to stand right here with you today in the darkness that's crystal clear for you. A place where darkness remains, but now it's, it's changed because Jesus stands with his light and his presence for you, even when it's hard to see. 
So I wonder, what would happen if you took this painting off the canvas, off the easel, and you placed it, literally placed it in a place of darkness in your life? What would change about that place of darkness? I I think it wouldn't be as dark, would it? I think you'd see Jesus there a little bit more regularly, speaking into your life, shaping something in you that's not darkness, but it's light. I think that it might change for you as he, as he made that place of darkness a holy place, full of his light and his presence. It's, it's such a small thing, isn't it, how seeking Jesus changes a, a dark reality for you? I know that in my own life. See, at my house, we have a brick wall. And on that long brick wall, there's a fireplace and there's a big dark wooden mantle. And at one end of that brick mantle, there's signs of life all over the place. There is a collection of seashells that reminds our family about great moments of fun at the beach and adventure. And right next to that, inevitably, is always a collection of Lego heads and necklaces and action figures like G.I. Joe. I promise they're not mine. Not all of them are mine. (laughs) And those signs of life are real for us. And yet on the other end of that mantle is a picture that my kids placed there. It's a picture of my parents. And I have to tell you, even today, three years after my mom died from cancer, that picture is still hard for me to look at. Because it's a stark reminder, a crystal clear reminder that My mom's not going to be joining us at our table when we eat dinner this afternoon. I know that she's resting. I know she's waiting to experience her own resurrection, but she's not here, and it's a a crystal clear reminder for me. And it's really hard to see that picture sometimes. Uh, So the other day, I decided to do something, and I, I took this picture, and I put it there next to the picture of my parents. And when I did that, something changed about that reality for me. As you look back at this picture, as you look there across the tomb, you get to see what Mary saw, grave clothes. The evidence of death that they bear can't be denied. There's blood there. I can certainly understand why Mary wept as she looked into the tomb. I didn't have to look far down my mantle before I saw grave clothes in the picture of my mom. It was crystal clear. And if I'm honest, I'm seeking something besides Jesus today. I'm seeking an answer for death. And I brought my mom here to the tomb with me again this morning. I do it every Easter. And my guess is that many of you can see the evidence of death crystal clear in your family, in your friends' lives, in your workplace, no matter where you are. And you get why Mary weeps too. So maybe it's just too hard to see angels through the tears. Whom do you seek, they ask. Uh, Maybe it's even harder to see Jesus when he asks, Whom are you seeking? Perhaps the grave clothes were too much. I don't know. The last time that Mary heard Jesus' voice speak, it was on the cross when he died. and, And he said those words, It is finished from the cross. And I think something that day on Good Friday died inside of Mary. But when he speaks her name at the tomb, she spins around and she's alive again. Something is reborn inside of her as she glimpses Jesus, but she sees even more. She sees a picture of her own future. So look there at the entrance of the tomb in the distance. It's not death anymore. It's life. The green garden of growth, a new creation reality, the answer to death. It's Jesus risen and alive. The demise of death has dawned in Jesus. And though Mary could only see those grave clothes crystal clear, she saw them differently now because they were transformed into a sign of a new creation and the possibility of her resurrection and the day coming when death will be swallowed up forever, when all tears will be wiped from your eyes and from hers. The gardener of all gardeners came that day to greet Mary on Easter and to welcome her into a new creation reality where death is no longer the final answer. Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
And that painting, sitting up there on my mantle next to my mom. It doesn't change the fact that my mom won't be joining us for Easter today. And there's still that empty place in my heart. It's crystal clear. But as I place this on my mantle next to a picture of my mom, for once in a long while I got to see something different about that picture of her because Jesus met me there and he transformed that mantle into a holy place where the grave clothes are now obsolete and a picture I think of my grave clothes someday and my mom's. A day where she rises and I rise and you rise bodily to be with Jesus forever and that is the power of the gospel at Easter that John wants you to see as he stands there with you at the boundary between death and life and makes it a holy place. So what would happen if you took this picture off of the easel and you placed it somewhere where your family grieves and mourns? What would happen? I think it would change it. As you began to see something other than an answer of death, you'd start to see the possibility of life and the promise that Jesus will bring you into at the day of his return and your resurrection. Meeting Jesus right there at the boundary between death and life at the empty tomb, it changes things, doesn't it? There's one more reality then that John wants you to see, a change that happens. And, and as you view Martin's painting, it has to do with Mary and it has to do with this news that Jesus gives her as he says, don't hold on to me, but rather go and tell. And yet I think in order to understand that, you have to consider what Martin paints there so poignantly, that moment when Mary's arms are stretched out. And I wonder in that moment, is her reaction hope or desperation? I think it might be actually a bit of both. As you hear her words, her desperate words, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will come and I'll take him away. Do you know those words? They're agonizing words. They are formed for Mary in the crucible of an old reality where death has the final word and hope is non-existent. So strong and clear is that reality that Mary can't even imagine the possibility, can't even begin to see who she is addressing. No reaction to angels, no recognition of Jesus, not until he says her name. And the darkness, it lifts. And light returns. And life is kindled again. And we get that reality when you're just that desperate. It can be suffocating. Just tell me. Just show me. Just help me. Just intervene. Just stop. Make it stop. Just tell me where you have laid him. Who can you see from your last week, from your last month, from your last year who have said those things, who's cried bitterly? Who's cried bitterly? Who's spoken hopelessly through their Instagram posts? Who's yelled at anguish at one more school shooting? who's buried their heads in their hand because they've got absolutely nothing left and they don't know where to turn? Who do you know who's cried so many tears in the darkness of night that it feels impossible for them to see clearly anymore? What are their names? Whoever you brought with you this morning, whether it's just in your heart or they're right there next to you today, listen to them say it too. They've taken away my home my husband, my children, my safety, my rights, my dignity, my hope, my life, our desperate grief, and the world's grief is concentrated here in Mary's desperate response to a crystal clear old reality, and then it all changes. Mary, and light is kindled. Mary and life returns. Mary and hope is reborn in the middle of desperation. Justin, Jim and Beth, Jen, Harlan, Fred, Alex, Jeff, Jane, say your name in your heart, say it out loud. 
However you choose, just say your name because Jesus has come today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And he speaks your name. And hope is kindled again. And all of a sudden, his words for you are invitation and greeting and consolation and even gentle rebuke. Come on, guys. Can't you see it? It's me. I've been there right there at the boundary with you all along as he stands in a new creation reality and he draws you to himself no matter what you're seeking today. It's enough to make you cry out, Rabboni, teacher, master, Lord, Jesus, pure joy, because you have seen again today the risen Jesus as he invites you to go into a desperate place of someone that you've named in your heart today. As Jesus says to you, don't hold on to me. But instead, go and tell them what you have seen in the glory of my resurrection that I might change the picture for them as well. You see, he changed it and he made Mary now a sent one and it's what he makes you as he meets you here at the boundary between desperation and hope. And for you and that person you name makes it a holy place where he changes it all. In 2003, James Martin painted this picture, Resurrection Morning. What's clear, we know all too well. What's blurry, we only see in part. And we wait for it. Sometimes we wait for it with longing agony, but we still wait for it as followers of Jesus with peace and with joy. We wait for it. Where Easter light dawns forever, even though the darkness lasts for a while where now death no longer has the final word, those grave clothes now, now they're still real, but they're transformed and they become signs that point us ahead to our own resurrection, our bodily resurrection, our future in Jesus, a place where now hope remains as Jesus calls you, not apart from from reality and desperation, but where he meets you in the middle of that place. The dark tomb, the lifeless slab covered in grave clothes, the desperate reaction of Mary are all of a sudden, I think for us today, a little harder to see because our eyes are drawn to what's there at the back of the image. Lights and life and hope as Jesus stands there and that's you reaching up in a holy place between darkness and light, between death and life, between desperation and hope as he commissions and sends you as a messenger on this Easter into desperate places to change it even for them. So what would happen if you took this canvas off the wall and you dared to take it into a place of your personal darkness this week? What would happen if you took this canvas and you put it with your family at a place of personal loss and grief and mourning? What would happen if you took it into a place where they're desperate and he wants to change their reality. We had an opportunity to work with the artist, James Martin, to provide a copy of this image, Resurrection Morning, for you. On your way out, the ushers will be standing there to give you a copy so that you might take it and put it in a place of darkness, of death and mourning, of desperation as Jesus sends you as his messenger to proclaim that the glory of a new creation reality has now changed everything for you and for the world. I can't wait to hear stories about where that picture goes with you this week. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.